Hello, today we're going to discuss electric forces. In order to have an electrical force, you must have two charged objects. Much like when you have a gravitational force, you must have two objects that have mass. When we start talking about charged objects, we have to remember that there are two kinds of charge. There's positive charge and there's negative charge. Like charges, either both positive or both negative, will repel one another. While opposite charges, a positive charged object and a negative charged object, will attract one another. When we have a charged object, charge is always conserved. Whenever charge is created, that means that electrons are being transferred from one object to another. One object is gaining electrons, one object is losing them. Electrons cannot be created or destroyed. So whenever we have this transfer of electrons, that means that when one object gains electrons and becomes negative, the other object is losing electrons and becoming that much more positive. So it's a zero-sum game. The number of electrons and the amount of charge always will remain the same, and it should add up to be zero for the entire um, system that you're dealing with. Our unit for charge is something called the Coulomb. We'll talk about that in just a minute. In 1909, American physicist Robert Millikan determined the charge of an electron by doing his famous oil drop experiment. And he dropped a different um, number of oil drops through two charged plates, and between those charged plates is an electrical field, and he was able to balance the oil drop, put it into equilibrium by balancing its gravitational force downward with the electrical force upward. And based on that, he was kept getting this multiple of the same number over and over again based on the number of oil drops he had present. And he was able to determine the charge of one uh, electron to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Of course, that's negative because electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles. We have two different kinds of materials that we consider when talking about electric charge. Those are conductors and insulators. Conductors are materials in which electrons can move freely, while insulators are materials in which electrons hold on tightly to them. When you take uh, a balloon and you rub it against your hair and you hold it against the wall and it sticks, your hair is a conductor because it loses the electrons freely. The balloon is the insulator because it wants to hold on tightly to those electrons and that's what happens in that process. In order for charge to be created, we're talking about basically electrons being transferred. And there are three different ways that charge is transferred or charge is created. The first is conduction. When we talk about conduction, electrons are transferred via direct contact between two objects. So you have you know, a direct contact, and those electrons are traveling from one object to another based on that direct contact. The other two ways are induction, which is when electrons will jump from a charged object onto another object without direct contact. And this is what happens when you shuffle your feet across a carpeted floor and reach out and touch a door handle, and you get shocked before you actually touch the door handle. That is induction. And then finally, the kind, last kind is friction. And this is probably the one that we're most familiar with, where electrons are actually forced from one object to another based on, you know, you sh shuffle your feet across the carpet, you rub the balloon against your hair, those kind of things. Um, cause those electrons to be transferred from one object to another. Our electrical force law is something called Coulomb's law, and Coulomb was able to determine that the force between two objects, or two charged particles I should say, is directly related to the product of their charges, which in the equation below is represented by Q1 and Q2, and inversely related to the square of the distance between them, that R squared value in our denominator, which we've seen before. And much like when we looked at Newton's law of universal gravitation, which we'll compare in just a second. Coulomb's law also has a proportionality constant. This time it's the letter K. And for a Coulomb's constant, it's 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton's meter squared per Coulomb squared, which cancels out your units and leaves you with a force measured in Newtons. As you notice, the, the R squared squared was in the denominator, so yet again we're looking at an inverse square relationship just like we had with Newton's law of universal gravitation. So very, very similar here. Newton's law of universal gravitation, which is on the right uh, on the diagram here below, remember it deals with two objects that have mass. So any two objects that have mass have a force between them, the gravitational force, while two many objects that have charge have a force between them, the electrical force, and that is on the left below. So as you can see, very, very similar. You have that proportionality constant out front, you have the product of, on the left, two charges, on the right, two masses, and the distance between them is squared. Again, that's the distance between their centers of masses. The one difference, though, about Newton's law of universal gravitation and Coulomb's law is that gravity is always positive, while electrical forces can be positive or negative.
just quick reminder here, so just like gravity, electrical force is a field force, okay, and acts upon any charged ob object, much like gravity is a field force that acts on any object that has mass. If the force between two objects is positive, that means the forces are repelling each other because our charges are the same. If it's negative, that means that the force is an attractive force between the two objects because they have different charges. So Q1 would be positive, Q2 would be negative, or vice versa. If the net force acting on an object is zero, that means the object is in equilibrium. So just the same rules you've deal with, dealt with before. Our forces are balanced. And if you have more than one force acting on the object, of course you're going to use vector addition, just like you've been using all semester long with multiple forces acting on an object. And this is just like any other force. So when we had forces before, remember that force equals mass times acceleration. So if you have two objects that have charge and have mass, and there's an electrical force between them, then you can determine their accelerations if you know their masses. Work equals force times distance, okay? And also change in energy. That's one other thing to remember here. And if we move a charged object through an electrical field, then we're going to have a change in its potential energy, just like we had before when we had an object that had mass moving through a gravitational field. And impulse would equal force times time. So things that you've seen before that you should be familiar with and that you should be comfortable with from mechanics can still apply to electricity. Thanks.